bags. It's something that his airline does individually. Notion has said that uh, no consumer should be forced to buy a new bag as a result of this voluntary initiative. Of course, though, if the smaller size is adopted by airlines, customers will be forced just to do just that, buy a new case or forget about having hand luggage. IATA said that many carriers welcomed the initiative and then said some others like uh, Air Canada and WestJet who are on their way over here shortly to the fly from the UK that is uh, said they would not be reducing the carry-on size to confirm to the new to conform to the new standard Air Canada already allows luggage which is no larger than 21.5 times 15.5 times 9 inches and EasyJet uh, sorry EasyJet WestJet uh, slightly smaller 21 by 15 by 9 what do you think about the hand luggage? Are you always delayed by passengers trying to force a case that's far too big into the, the cubby hole thing? Or do you feel that airlines are not consistent in the way they deal with passengers? And they sometimes stop people with cases that are too big and sometimes let them through. What are your feelings? Do you think perhaps we should go back to all suitcases being free when you buy your ticket? Let me know. Facebook.com slash John Gwynn Travel Show. Seclo Sounds is based at the Old Rectory, the home of our studio partner, Interaction MK. They've been bringing arts to life in Milton Keynes for over 35 years. They use the arts to improve the life chances of disabled people and others in challenging circumstances through shared creative activity. These programmes help participants to develop creative, personal and social skills. You can visit them at www.interactionmk.org.uk. You can make comments about the show at facebook.com slash John Gwynn Travel Show. I've mentioned quite a few times I spend a lot of time at Luton Airport. I'm travelling on the staff bus and you see the ground crew and you see the, f- the flight attendants, air stewardesses if you're speaking in old money. And there's one thing I've always noticed about the flight crew, the captains, the flight attendants. They are always immaculate. They are well representing the airline that they f- they work for. You must think that the airline has an, an unnatural level of control over the people that, even though they're not actually flying and they're on their own time, they still look like they're professional people. Of course, that's different when you're on, you're in a hotel in the Caribbean, for instance, and they're letting their hair down. But when they're in the uniform, they are very, very professional, almost like a military operation, you could say. But Qatar, the airline, has probably overstepped the mark with the control over the the free time of its employees. And uh, the United Nations has urged Qatar Airways to scrap contracts which allow them to fire flight attendants if they become pregnant. Qatar is a state-owned company and it makes people sign the contract which says, The company reserves the right to automatically term- terminate your contract as a flying cabin, cabin crew member should you become pregnant. An earlier contract also required women to tell the airline as soon as they knew that we were pregnant so Qatar Airways could decide whether or not it wanted to terminate their contracts. And if you didn't tell the airline that you were pregnant, you would get terminated because you didn't tell them, which is a breach of your contract. This new contract still gives the airline the power to fire pregnant flight attendants, but it says it can apply for, they can apply for ground position if one is available. Of course, some people say you go into the job, you know the rules, so if you violate them, you lose a job. And it can be difficult for a heavily pregnant woman to get up and down the aisles of an airline, so aircraft, so it can make them to do their job. Difficult to make them do their job. But to fire somebody for their pregnant, not to give them maternity leave, seems a bit strange. But anyway, there was a string of complaints from workers, unsurprisingly, which sparked a year-long investigation by the International Labour Organisation who ruled that the contract breaches its 57-year-old rule against discrimination at work, and this has been backed by 172 countries. The International Labour Organisation has urged Qatar Airways to review a ban on female cabin crew being picked up and dropped off at work by men who are not their husband or blood relatives, which is also another extremely strict rule to have on an employee. And the ILO, the uh, International Labour Organisation, have also asked for more evidence of another clause in their contracts, which says they must obtain prior permission from the company in case he or she wishes to change marital status and get married. The Qatar Airlines say that this requirement has now been dropped. 
the uh, chief executive of Qatar Airways says that uh, the ILO has had a vendetta against both his country and the airline. And he said, I don't give a damn about the ILO. I'm here to run a successful airline. Around 80% of the cabin crew are female and 90% are migrant workers. Crew members said they're reluctant to submit complaints for fear of retaliation, possible termination of their contracts and to be deported from Qatar. Qatari government claimed the allegations come from a small group of anonymous people and were based on an earlier contract which has been replaced by new terms, which came in force in December last year. It said half the existing crew had already transferred to the new contract and the other half would do so in the coming months. And since the new contract came in, no pregnant cabin crew has left except for personal reasons and a few have taken jobs on the ground. So how do you feel about this? Do you think that an airline is having un- too much pressure on how a member of their staff lives their life away from work? Do you have some sympathy for the Qatari Airlines because they have to train these people and it's a cost to them i think it's too far i'm not meant to comment on news stories but anyway what do you think let me know facebook.com slash john Gwyn travel show i'm colin price and when i'm not touring the globe with some of the biggest names in rock you can join me every friday at 8 p.m for roadie rocks i'll be raiding the vaults for the very best in classic rock bringing you stories from the road and joined by some very special guests. So join me, Colin Price, live from the Shed of Rock, every Friday at 8pm for Roadie Rocks, only on Seclo Sounds. Guaranteed no Bon Jovi. Keep up to date with travel news by liking my page, facebook.com slash John Gwynn Travel Show. Last year, Paris Hilton's younger brother, Conrad, was arrested after disrupting a flight from London to LA. At the time, I said it'd probably be unlikely that he'd get the prison sentence, which most people get for all this sort of incident. And he's just been sentenced to community service and a $5,000 fine, which uh, isn't going to be much for somebody of his background. Authorities say that Hilton was on a British Airways flight in July last year, and he, during the disruption he called other passengers peasants and threatened to kill crew members and flight attendants had to handcuff him. Uh, the 21-year-old was ordered to complete 750 hours, which is around about a month apparently, of community service, and also to undergo mental health and substance abuse treatment. He pleaded guilty to this back in March, and he pleaded to guilty to a misdemeanor assault. assault. Although, I mean, if somebody else had threatened to kill the staff, it might not be a misdemeanor, it could have been a terrorism charge, but uh, there we go. In court, the uh, Hotel Fortune Air apologised and promised it wouldn't happen again. Maybe a terrorist could apologise and promise it wouldn't happen again, and maybe they'll just get 750 hours of community service. Hilton still faces uh, charges in Riverside County for reckless driving and evading police for an August chase that ended with him breaking his hand when his BMW hit another car and a large lorry. It's difficult to say that it seems to be different for people who are very rich compared to people who are, air quotes, normal. What do you think? Do you think that somebody who threatens to kill aircraft crews should just be given community service? Do you think a prison sentence would have been right here? Let me know, facebook.com slash John Gwynn Travel Show. Now for a story you probably came across in the newspapers. It's about a reported... A attempted an abduction of children at a resort in Cyprus. Well, the Cypriot police have denied reports that there was an attempted child snatch at the hotel, and they have accused British newspapers of hyping up the story and claim that no children were at risk. The tour operator Thomas Cook earlier confirmed in the week that it had moved around 50 clients from the uh, Anastasia Beach Hotel because of concerns over the safety of their clients' children. The Daily Record in Scotland had reported that on Tuesday night, a gang of three Romanians tried to abduct three children from outside the hotel and that hotel guests have seen them stalking children for the past week, filming them and taking pictures. Based on interviews with guests at the hotel, the Daily Record reported that a holiday maker grabbed a man and a woman as he saw them trying to lure children, all aged under 10, into a vehicle that another man, 
uh, who, who was the driver, had already fled the scene. But police in Cyprus are now claiming the incident has been blown out of all proportion and has issued a statement via their Facebook page. This statement says that a 19-year-old man from Bulgaria had been arrested over claims by holidaymakers that had been filming their children and was trying to abduct them. The man was questioned, his phone and house were searched, and he has since been released while police make for, take further statements. Uh, a spokesperson for the police told the Cyprus Mail that the investigation was ongoing, but it did not happen in the way that was reported in the press. Thomas Cook's spokesperson has said, The safety and welfare of our customers is always our first priority, and upon hearing about the alleged incident, we immediately deployed our experienced resort team to the property to provide those customers in residence with individual support. On request, we assisted 16 customer bookings, which amounted to around about 50 people, who wished to move to an alternative hotel, and there were also two families who travelled back to the UK early. The spokesperson went on from Thomas Cook, Although there have been conflicting reports as to as what exactly happened, exactly occurred at the property, we would like to reassure all customers that we take all allegations incredibly seriously and we are continuing to work closely with our customers in resort and the local authorities. Any customers with concerns about future holidays at this hotel are asked to contact us directly so we can deal with them personally and directly. And Thomas Cook continues to offer hotels to the hotel, sorry, holidays to the hotel and to Cyprus. Uh, the press reports I saw and through the travel press, well, not the travel press, the travel Facebook pages did make this seem a very serious incident. And it's always difficult when you're not near the area to know what's correct and what isn't. But uh, I have to watch this carefully. And as I say, the Cypriot police say that it did not happen as reported in the uh, UK press. What do you think? Do you think the UK press overreacted? Was you in Cyprus at the time? Uh, please share your views at facebook.com slash John Gwynn Travel Show. And finally, some news for you, for those of you who travel to Orlando to do Wet and Wild. Perhaps that's the one theme park that you really spend your time at. Well, I've got some news for you. It's going to close next year after nearly 40 years in business. Universal Orlando has confirmed that the planned closure will make way for the recently announced Volcano Bay water project, which is due to open in 2017. A spokesperson said that Wet and Wild Orlando has been a place where guests created wonderful memories. As America's first water park, Wet and Wild has been the birthplace of numerous innovations that have now considered, considered a normal part of the, work, the water park experience. It was created by SeaWorld founder George Millay and then opened in 1977. It remained the USA's top water park until the 19, late 1990s when Walt Disney World Resort launched Typhoon Lagoon and Blizzard Beach. There were 1.3 million visitors to the Wet n Wild last year and it was the fourth most visited in the country after the two Disney water parks and Sealand, SeaWorld's Orlando's Aquatica. Uh, apparently, the new Vol Volcano Bay Next Generation Water Park will completely refine the water park experience with radically inno innovative attractions and peaceful moments of relaxation. So if you're a Wet n Wild fan, you've, you've only got months left to get your last dip. If you have really enjoy it and you've had some great times there, uh, please share your photos, facebook.com slash Show. And this is the end of this week's travel news. the end of this week's show i hope the information shared on kenya will inspire you to go and visit the place it's one of my favorite countries in the world and i'm looking forward to the time i finally go back facebook.com slash john green travel show is the web page to put all your comments about the show and any suggestions or questions you have and i hope you can join me next time on the john green travel show on setclosesounds.org where each week i'm checking it out before you check in MK Pulse proudly sponsors Seclo Sounds. MK Pulse is Milton Keynes' local magazine, bringing helpful information on food, health, fashion, money, travel, culture, and much more to 84,000 people every month. Plus, news, views, and what's on from around the city. If it's happening in Milton Keynes, it's in MK Pulse, and it's available online at www.mkpulse.co.uk. MK Pulse and Seclo Sounds, the heart and soul of the city.